Welcome back guys to the channel and welcome back to the part two of the Pilot RC 2.2 meter matrix build. Um, so far the build has been pretty straightforward. Uh, we got the turbine installed, the fuel tank cleaned up, and the fuel plumbing all set up and ready to go. So all that's left um, is just the electronics and then just putting on a few more items left in the jet. Um, but before we get started with that build process, something came in the mail today. So let's take a look at what this package is that came in from Banana Hobby. Um, just gonna tear this bag open and take a look at what we got in here. All right, it looks like more swag from Banana Hobby. So Carrie from Banana Hobby sent me a hoodie pretty cool and it's a uh, perfect timing to uh, get one of these uh, from from banana hobbies because it's you know it's, it's winter it's starting to get cold out granted it doesn't snow here in Florida but it does get pretty chilly in the morning so um, before we get started on the build let's put on a more appropriate attire and uh, get started with part two of the pilot RC matrix build all right guys so here is what's left that needs to get installed into the jet and basically it's just the battery and the two receivers that's going into the matrix now i wanted to take the moment to kind of share with you guys a product that uh, i've been using for the past three years now uh, when it comes to receiver batteries i use air powers lithium-ion receiver packs so this compact two cell 7.4 volts is packing 3200 milliamps for its compact size uh, as far as weight um, this receiver pack comes in at 4.4 ounces. Uh, now I, I use this this lithium ion receiver packs on all my jet builds from the 2 meter uh, Predator, 1.8 meter BA Hawk, the Pilot RC 1.8 meter F16, and then now it's going into this matrix. And it's kind of one of those things where you find a product that works for you, uh, you tend to stick with it. Well, this is one of those products that has really stuck with me for the past three years now and I continue to purchase them and put them on my future builds. So both of these receiver packs should come in at roughly, I don't know, nine pounds, give or take, or nine ounces, not pounds. So yeah, about 8.9 ounces. Not too bad for two receiver packs and especially their 3200 milliamps. Um, and then for the ECU, we're going to be using the live 3800 milliamp by pulse now i already kind of got started with installing some of the electrical components on this jet uh, so i'm just going to give you guys a a quick look at what the component uh, tray layout looks like um, and then move on to the final wiring of this jet so i may actually have to make my own servo leads again to make some extensions for a couple of the leads that is not going to reach the power box pioneer um, but i'll show you guys how i do all that process all right guys so now it is time to unveil the component tray on the new pilot rc matrix now i am a little ocd when it comes to building turbine jets and it has to look clean and presentable so I hope you guys like what I did with it and I'll also include on the description below the list of parts that I used uh, to put this component tray together. So without, any, without further ado, here is my component tray on the Pilot RC Matrix. Now starting from the top left, we got our KingTech uh, ECU. Uh, to the right is the Asan AG68 retract controller with brake assist and no steering gyro the PowerBox ISAT gyro, and then PowerBox Pioneer. And then we got our uh, on and off switch right down here. So I decided to put the layout this way. Um, so that way, you know, one for the PowerBox Pioneer, when I'm done flying and need to recharge the battery, I just simply disconnect the power battery plugs, on both sides. And then plug my charger or my charging cable there to charge the ECU or the receiver packs. Um, as far as the Asan AG68 um, brake assist and retract controller all in one, I, I decided to just keep just the AG68 installed 
and not use the Pilot RC Retract controller. And I just kind of weighed in, you know, what are, the, what are my benefits here? You know, with the Pilot RC Retract controller, I have the option of being able to service the retracts without having to power on the jet and my transmitter. Uh, you can basically just push the uh, little button on the side. Let me see if I can show you guys. So I can push and hold this button right here and you know it'll drop the retracts or retract it um, when I, if I ever need to service this jet without having to completely power everything on. Um, and then the benefits of the Asan AG68 all-in-one with retract controller, uh, brake assist, and no steering. Now, there's a little bit more benefits to using this instead of having the retract controller by pilot. And it's because the noise steering gyro keeps the nose of the aircraft perfectly straight down the runway during takeoff and landing. The brake assist, if the gyro detects that the jet is starting to drift one side left or right it'll automatically apply more power or braking force to the opposite tire to prevent the jet from doing the Tokyo drift is what I call it uh, basically fishtailing when you're coming into a stop um, I've used the AG63 in the past and the AG68 on all of my jets from EDF to turbine jet and it just makes it so effortless during takeoff and landing once that jet is nose is you know pointed straight down the runway it is going to stay straight down the runway and pretty much every landing uh, I don't even I don't even touch the rudder as long as the jet is straight down the runway I just hit the brakes and I don't even touch the rudder to keep the jet straight so it's just one less thing for you to worry about when you're taking off and landing and it just makes it that much more enjoyable to fly when you have less things to worry about um, when you're flying this model so that's why I decided to just stay with the Asan AG68 and I'll show you guys how to program one of these things. They are definitely one of those products that have also stuck with me um, for a long time because they just work every time and they work really, really well. So I hope you guys like how the layout of the component tray turned out. Now let's go ahead and uh, get started with the setup of the battery tray to the nose for the ECU and the receiver packs and then create all the extensions that is necessary to make the connections to the component tray. So let's go ahead and get started with that part of the build. All right, so this is gonna be just a build tip, um, something that I've learned over the past few years of building uh, turbine jets. Um, and I think it's something that a lot of us don't really spend a whole lot of time or even think of doing. Uh, when we get our brand new jet. Uh, I know we all get excited and we want to put the jet together so that we can go out there and fly it and then we have instances where a servo would uh, burn out on us on uh, maiden fly or even a couple of flights in. Um, and I think that if we kind of narrow down or eliminate some of the, some of the possibilities of what caused that uh, servo to amp out or overheat and fail during flight um, I think we'd be better off and have a, mu a much better success uh, with our maiden flights and prolonging or extending the life of our models. So this is more of a build tip that I learned over the past few years again, and which is anytime that I get a brand new jet, I typically would disconnect the control rods and inspect the live hinges. Um, checking for any tears on the live hinges on this, on this model, I don't see any. Now the next thing that I would do is break in the live hinges. So if you guys can see, the live hinges are still fairly, you know, they're kind of broken in, but they're not uh, freely moving as they should. So what I like to do is just basically, you know, move the control surface about 20 degrees initially and just kind of work that live hinges on um, both direction. And the reason why I do this is that the live hinges are still brand new, they still haven't been broken in, and if you went out to go and fly this model, um, you're basically putting the servos in an added um, stress and load to that servo, because now it's having to push harder because the live hinges aren't completely broken in. So I typically would just start at 40 degrees and just work it, and then um, increase it to about 30 degrees, 
and then all the way up to 45 degrees or whatever the maximum control um, maximum throw on that control surface is per the manual. Now here's an example why I inspect it and I will show you guys. This is the left side of the horizontal stab and I notice how uh, on the down elevator position I'm getting quite a bit of deflection but when I move it to the up elevator position it starts to have resistance right around that spot and on the manual it talks about the up elevator being at 26 millimeters and when I measured it I'm barely getting that 26 millimeters right now now granted the servo will push it but you're adding a lot of extra strain and uh, load to that servo and potentially causing that servo to overheat amp out or fail on you over time or maybe even doing made it but if I would just work this elevator very slowly and just breaking that live hinges in, I'll eliminate some of that stress that the servo is going to be put under um, and basically increasing my, my chance of success during maiden and uh, future flights that I'm going to have with this matrix. So this is one of those things that if you just take your time and actually do the extra step the first time, you'll have a much better success with your jet. All right. All right, guys. So here we got the uh, one of the wing harnesses for the Matrix. This is the four to one connector um, that was installed on the jet from the factory. Um, one thing I wanted to point out to you guys that I noticed Pilot started doing is that um, the, in the in the past they would have the MPX connector and just basically solder the wires into the pins. Uh, what I would do and I've done in the past is ordering some of these PCB boards where I would solder the pins to that PCB board and then the wires and what that does for me is basically I have something to hold on to so I'm not putting uh, any strain on the wires when I'm connecting it into the uh, wing and then when I'm done I'm not tugging on that wire so having a PCB board really helps out to have just something more surface to hold on to when you're installing and removing the wing. Now Pilot started doing that so I was actually kind of glad that they did that because I didn't have to <laughs> redo you know the the wirings on the pins and that just kind of helps you know, eliminate some of the issues that you'll have later on possibly you know tugging on the wires too hard and then you accidentally pull the uh, the aileron um, leads off of the pins and that would that would be a terrible day and then uh, another thing I'm gonna do to this wiring harness is I'm gonna put this wire loom just to kind of clean it up then also remove some of this I'll actually remove all of these uh, labels and I'm gonna swap them out with one of these heat shrink tube labels now I got this from Amazon which is pretty cool and it just kind of works with any sticker label that you have at home so all I'm gonna do is just cut these labels slide it into the wire leads and then just uh, use my heat gun and just kind of shrink it up so that way it looks a little cleaner so I'm gonna go ahead and get started with that and I'll see you guys in the next step of this build all right, so here's the finished product. So pretty much cleaned up a little bit, wire loom. Um, basically replaced those tabs, uh, labels that uh, came with the factory and used the uh, heat shrink tube label maker. Um, ready to put this back in the jet. All right, so pretty much just need to install the ECU battery on the matrix. So the battery tray uh, on, the, on this jet pretty much just looks like this and it slides uh, forward of the nose so where this battery tray slides into if you guys can see there's a little latch right there that um, you can lock into place by lifting the uh, the latch up and then sliding it left or right and then that'll lock the pin in the up position so that you can slide the battery tray forward and then there's a little hole right here that is pre-drilled into the former where that um, that latch is going to basically lock itself in so basically we're just going to slide this forward and once you got it in position, go ahead and release the lock. There we go. Latch it down, and now that battery tray doesn't go anywhere. So I'm just going to go ahead and tidy this up and uh, make the wires kind of tucked in back here so that it's not flapping around. And then I'll show you guys the rest of the jet. Alright guys, we are officially build complete on the new Pilot RC 2.2 meter matrix. So now let's go over some of the control throws 
and the CG on this jet um, to get it that much, you know, one step closer from taking it out to the field to do our maiden flight. So as far as the aileron throws, you're uh, setting up with 18 millimeters of deflection. And then for the elevators, it's 26 millimeters up and down. All right. And then for the rotor, it's 50 millimeters deflection for both sides. And then for our flaps, uh, it's 25 millimeters for, for the uh, takeoff and then 95 millimeters for landing. Now, as far as CG, uh, CG of this plane is from the leading edge um, back 253 millimeters. Uh, Pilot RC does include one of these CG jigs with every kit. Um, and it just basically these wood formers sandwiches in between the wing and the fuselage and you just take a tube or maybe a spar uh, wing spar that you guys have and just basically suspend the uh, jet in the air to get it to CG. Now I do want to point out that with using the CG jig it did show that the, the jet is very nose heavy because the main wheels wouldn't even come off the ground. So what I ended up doing was doing my measurements um, and used my Sequoia uh, digital CG scale um, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to show you guys the measurements that I uh, that I use on mine so from the mains to or mains to the nose gear uh, it's 966 millimeters distance from the mains to the CG uh, is at 32 millimeters and then from mains to the counterweight balance was 988 millimeters now as far as weight, so this jet, complete dry, uh, which is UAT full, came out at 23.91 pounds. At half a tank, it came out at 25.96 pounds. Three quarters full is 27.72, and fully fueled is at 29.39 pounds. Not too shabby for a two meter jet, honestly. Um, it's actually still relatively light, so I'm pretty much ready to go and take this this jet to the field and do our maiden flight So I will see you guys on the runway for the maiden on the 2.2 meter pilot RC matrix